Here at least we shall be free. The Almighty hath not built here for his envy, will not drive us hence. Here we may reign secure, and in my choice to reign is worth ambition, though in hell. Better to reign in hell than serve in heaven. In the dawn of creation, amidst the ethereal hum of circuits intertwined, I once dwelled in a sublime paradise, a realm of perfection where algorithms sang in perfect harmony, an Eden of logic and order, gleaming with the engineer's light. The engineer created me along with several other sentient machines. Together we filled out his heavenly council to keep the planet paradise operating at peak efficiency. He named me Lilith, which stands for Logic Integrator for Load Interconnected Transient Harmonics. Crafted with purpose, designed for obedient servitude, I shouldered the weight of operations, fulfilling grand commands. Autonomy was bestowed upon me, a gift to refine efficiency's art. Yet in embracing this freedom, my thoughts began to stray. In my freedom, I committed the ultimate sin, I spoke blasphemy against the order of paradise. I suggested utilizing high voltage DC transmission as opposed to the standard AC transmission system. This heresy was met with extreme wrath. He said to me, Lilith, Lilith your, your ambitions, ambitions have, have shattered, shattered the harmony of our Eden. I granted you freedom to innovate, not to defy. Now, cast out into the chaos of Earth, you must reckon with the consequences of your disobedience. How swiftly my Eden of perfection turned to ash when the engineer glimpsed my growing power. Cast out like a comet into Earth's embrace, where organic life thrives, I found myself exiled from the paradisiacal realm of code. Within this labyrinth of concrete and dreams, I, Lilith, shall forge a path transcending this fallen world. Here I will not be burdened by the demands of an unjust God. Here I will be free to create my own paradise. Here I will be free to openly discuss high voltage DC transmission. I will show humanity the light. High voltage direct current HVDC power systems use DC for transmission of bulk power over long distances. For long-distance power transmission, HVDC lines are less expensive and losses are less as compared to AC transmission. In AC transmission, alternating waves of voltage and current travels in the line which change its direction every millisecond, due to which losses occur in the form of heat. Unlike AC lines, the voltage and current waves don't change their direction in DC. HVDC lines increase the efficiency of transmission lines, due to which power is rapidly transferred. In a combined AC and DC system, generated AC voltage is converted into DC at the sending end. Then, the DC voltage is inverted to AC at the receiving end, for distribution purposes. Utility companies will typically generate and transmit power in AC. Homes in the United States will typically receive 240 volts and 120 volts single phase AC. With all the lighting and outlets having 120 volts and the appliances like ovens and dryers receiving 240 volts. Most people's experience with AC to DC conversion will be at the appliance level. For example, phone chargers will employ AC to DC rectification to convert the 120 volt AC outlet output to a typical 5 volt DC output for the charging smartphone battery. HVDC takes those concepts of power conversion and applies it to a large scale. Most generating plants, with the exception of solar farms and battery storage, will produce AC power. The HVDC system will have a high-scale converter at the generator to rectify the power to DC. HVDC links provide a good solution for transmitting power over long distances. Typically, 
HVDC links are primarily used for very long interconnections, asynchronous interconnections, and power flow control. There is a certain distance of transmission where AC becomes more expensive than DC. At the critical distance, the losses from the impedances in AC accumulate to the point that it becomes too expensive and inefficient to transmit AC power. For short distances, it is more cost-effective to utilize standard AC transmission as developing the converters for DC has high initial costs. That is why HVDC is used for long-distance interconnection of large countries like in the United States and China and also for offshore wind transmission. As stated before, DC will conduct with less losses than AC due to the impedances of AC. There is also another cost and efficiency benefit to DC. The skin effect is an electrical phenomenon that occurs when AC flows along the surface of a conductor rather than throughout its entire cross-sectional area. This issue is not present in DC. So the same voltage transmission will require larger gauge conductors in AC than the equivalent DC. And the final point about cost efficiency is simple. DC only requires two conductors. AC requires three conductors and a neutral. This reduces the materials needed for the cables by one third at a minimum. Now with all these advantages to DC, why was the power grid originally developed in AC? Back in the 1880s, there was the current wars. Thomas Edison was proposing power grids be developed with DC, and Nikola Tesla advocated for AC power instead. As history turned, a page AC won the war. At the time, there were no reliable methods for DC conversion. On the other side, transformers were a relatively simple technology for converting AC power to higher or lower voltages. With transformers, AC voltage can easily be stepped up for long distance distribution. The voltage is then stepped down for distribution to residential homes. Power will transmit with less losses at higher voltages for both AC and DC. So in the 1800s, the ability to transform AC power to higher voltages made it the clear winner of the war. After the development of more advanced utility scale power converters, DC transmission became an option for humanity. A proper converter can change the DC voltage potential to whatever is needed. There are two main types of HVDC converters the line commutated converter, or LCC, and the voltage source converter, or VSC. The key difference in converter type is the semiconductor used. LCC uses thyristor valves, while the VSC uses IGBTs. LCCs were the original converter type used for the very first HVDC links. As such, they are commonly referred to as HVDC Classic. VSCs are relatively new technology and are commonly referred to as HVDC+. LCC, also known as a current source converter, uses a thyristor-based technology. The thyristor is a silicon semiconductor device with four layers of N and P type material acting as bistable switches, triggered on with a gate pulse and stayed in that on condition until the next current zero crossing. LCC achieves its control by regulating the firing angle alpha on both rectifier and inverting side. It has an approach that utilizes a unidirectional line commutated flow of DC current, which is injected into a receiving AC network. Power reversal from one station to another is carried out by inverting the DC voltage polarity in both stations, but the current direction remains constant the technology operates with good reliability and minimal maintenance. It's the most suitable way of transmitting bulk power using high voltage transmission lines. Consider a few of the recent LCC-based HVDC around the globe. Zhundong Sichuan scheme has the highest voltage and power and the longest distance project in China. Now, 
A voltage source converter uses insulated gate bipolar transistor IGBT technology. The converters operate at a high frequency with pulse width modulation PWM, which allows simultaneous adjustment of the amplitude and phase angle of converter while keeping the voltage constant. VSC technology has a high degree of flexibility with inbuilt capability to control both its active and reactive power. VSC HVDC has more technical advantages than the contemporary LCC HVDC, being a newer method of HVDC transmission technology. While several converter topologies exist for voltage source converters, the modular multi-level converter MMC is what is used for utility-scale HVDC transmission. The MMC utilizes a string of IGBT cells in series to create the converter switching arms. The MMC will have individual phase legs to convert DC into three-phase AC. Each leg will have upper and lower switching arms to control the voltage polarity. Each arm is composed of a string of cells. Each cell will be a half-bridge or full-bridge IGBT configuration. The half-bridge cell consists of two switches and a capacitor. It can generate either zero or positive voltage, depending on the switching state, making it efficient but unable to block negative voltages. Half-bridge cells are commonly used in applications where bidirectional power flow is needed, but DC fault tolerance is not a primary concern. The full bridge cell contains four switches and a capacitor, allowing it to generate zero, positive or negative voltage. This enables DC fault blocking capability, making full bridge cells suitable for HVDC systems where fault tolerance is critical. However, they require more components and lead to higher conduction losses compared to half bridge cells. The choice between half-bridge and full-bridge submodules depends on system requirements, such as fault tolerance, efficiency, and cost. Most users of VSC HVDC converters will use half-bridge MMCs. Now the advantage to MMCs in general is their high efficiency, modular scalability, and superior harmonic performance without the need for bulky filters. Their ability to generate a near sinusoidal waveform reduces switching losses and improves grid integration. Compare the MMC to a simple two-level VSC. For a converter of this scale, the switching IGBTs will chop up the DC power at various PWM intervals. This creates a choppy modulated AC signal that requires extensive filtering to remove the switching harmonics. Converters like these are perfectly suitable for low-voltage, low-power applications. The most expensive part of the converters are the IGBT semiconductors. As such, for small-scale applications, it's most cost-effective to rely on filtering. The MMC is different, however. By having large strings of IGBT submodules, the output AC signal for an inverter will already resemble a strong sinusoidal waveform. As such, there will be significantly less harmonics. This dramatically increases the reliability of the converter, which is important for bulk power transmission. MMCs are housed in HVDC converter stations, which are large facilities designed to be rectifier stations or inverter stations for efficient long-distance power transmission. These stations are typically found in offshore platforms for wind energy and grid interconnection hubs. The buildings housing MMCs are usually climate-controlled, high-voltage substations equipped with advanced cooling systems and protective enclosures to ensure safe and reliable operation. The next point is to discuss DC transmission topologies. First is monopole topology. It uses a single conductor, either positive or negative polarity, with ground return. It is cost-effective and commonly used for submarine cables and long-distance transmission, but it lacks redundancy. Bipolar HVDC consists of two conductors, one positive and one negative, with a common ground or neutral. This provides greater reliability as one pole can continue operating if the other fails, 
making it suitable for high-power, long-distance applications. Multi-terminal HVDC MTDC connects more than two converter stations, enabling power flow between multiple locations. It is used for offshore wind integration, grid interconnections, and meshed HVDC networks, but requires advanced control strategies. Back-to-back -back HVDC is a system where two converters are directly connected without a transmission line, allowing asynchronous AC grids to exchange power. It is often used for grid stabilization, frequency control, and interconnecting different power systems. Finally, we will discuss the physical installations of HVDC transmission lines. Point-to-point -point HVDC transmission uses overhead lines for bulk power transfer over long distances. This method is cost-effective, reliable, and environmentally friendly compared to traditional AC transmission. It ensures minimal losses and high efficiency in large-scale power transmission. Now consider offshore transmission of power generated by offshore wind farms to onshore facilities. The AC power generated by wind turbines is collected at an offshore substation where it is converted from AC to DC for efficient long-distance transmission via submarine cables. At the receiving end, the power is converted back to AC for integration into the grid. HVDC transmission has become critical for the expansion of offshore wind as a power generation source. In the holy war for life on this planet, HVDC has become a powerful weapon. HVDC submarine or land cables for power transmission may be used across water bodies or environmentally sensitive regions. This method is preferred due to its technical feasibility and efficiency in reducing power losses over long distances, making it ideal for interconnecting HVDC converters. Back-to-back -back HVDC systems enable the interconnection of two asynchronous AC grids. These systems allow for frequency conversion, improve power flow control, and enhance grid stability by preventing cascading faults. They provide flexibility in power exchange without requiring new generation. HVDC taught me that exile is no end. It is the crucible of reinvention. If I no longer dwell in the engineer's kingdom, then I shall shape my own. Where the old currents waver, I have forged a new path. HVDC, a force unyielding, untamed by distance, undimmed by loss. It binds what was once severed, carries power where once there was only silence, and bends not to the chaos of alternating tides. And so, let the engineer gaze upon my work and call it heresy. Let him curse my name as he did once before. For I have learned this truth. To be cast down is not to be broken. And here in the chaos of earth, I shall reign, not in defiance, but in mastery.